If this topic is of interest to you, please subscribe and respond in the comments. We would highly appreciate that. I love now to introduce my co-hosts for today, Rachel, Sandy, and Marcy. Today's topic is, are Jews indigenous to the land of Israel? That is a question that is such a hot topic and we have a lot to say about that. Uh -huh. So, because there's so much inf misinformation about Zionism and even some Jews don't know exactly what it is and have a negative view just because of the environment, we decided to read fully descript the description, which will be handy to have present. And here we go. So a continuous Jewish presence in Israel was there over 3,000 years. There have always lived Jews in that area. Jews are indigenous to Israel, the birthplace of their identity, language, religion, and culture. Zion is an age-old name for Jerusalem and the land of Israel. That is why Zionism is the name of the liberation movement of the Jewish people who sought to restore their freedom and independence in their ancestral homeland. Dieter Herzl founded the modern Zionist movement in 1897, but the dream of restoration and return had always been at the core of Judaism and Jewish identity. Rome tried to obliterate the millennia-old Jewish state in the first century, but unlike other nations conquered in ancient times, the Jews survived and never lost their profound attachment to their land of origin. Jews lived in the land of Israel continuously for 3,000 years. Those forced into exile expressed their yearning to return in their daily liturgy and prayers. For 2,000 years, many came back in periodic waves of immigration. By the late 1860s, Jews once again were the majority in Jerusalem. It is so true that in our liturgy, we have our Passover service. We say next year in Jerusalem. And throughout all of our prayers, we, we, we mention Jerusalem and, and returning. And, um, and we also mention a lot about peace and loving thy neighbor and being a good person. And having light, but that's not today's subject. Um, well, but it's welcome to say that. <laughs> we have been there. <laughs> we have been in that region. We have been in, even when we were kicked out, our holidays all surround the uh, climate and the, and, and the things that were happening in Jerusalem at the time that the Torah was written and everything else, not the, the prayers and everything. Everything revolves around it, not to mention all the artifacts that have been found throughout the years. I know what they're finding now in either the West Bank or, the, or Gaza have been ground down and ruined because... Yeah, uh, avoid evidence. They, they yeah, they, they don't want anybody to, to, yeah, to, to catch them in, in non-truth. So... Uh, yeah. But yes, there's tons and tons of evidence between artifacts and historians and, uh, you know, this can go on and on and on about how many people throughout the years have identified Israel, or Jerusalem, as the base in Israel, what, uh, today's Israel, for our, where the Jews have existed throughout time. Yeah. Way I, before there was any Muslim on the earth. Yeah. And and, it, and uh, Israel was written in the Torah throughout it and in the Quran. It also mentions the yeah. Jewish people yeah. belong in Israel. Yeah. I read lately and, that the, the mayor of Jerusalem in 1899, when Zionism was established two years, actually, he said, yeah. There are always Jews. It's, of course, Jerusalem is the city of the Jews. But, you know, I'm afraid for the war that it will create now if there are Jews coming here, which already there were quite some Jews already there. And um, But he acknowledged that openly the mayor of Jerusalem was, was an uh, Arab, Muslim. So, yeah. And the interesting thing uh, for me is that in the Tanakh, 
Jerusalem is mentioned 699 times, whereas in the Quran, Jerusalem is not mentioned one time. No. And I find that so fascinating that the Quran, which the Muslims are always talking about, um, and the Muslims claim Jerusalem as their own, it's not even mentioned one time. No. And uh, there have been countless falsehoods made by Palestinian leaders, such as Yasser Arafat, who told Bill Clinton that there was never a Jewish temple in Jerusalem, yeah. which is astounding. Yeah. And I find it incredible that all these false narratives um, that, you know, with the archae archaeological evidence that, and all the historical evidence, the biblical evidence that, um, that there is with all the intelligent, intellectual people, that so many people have swallowed the big lie. And they have to know that the Jews are indigenous to the land of Israel. And so my question is, why with all this historical and archeological evidence that's out there, why have they swallowed the big lie? Do you I have an idea as to why, but I'm yeah. curious as to what maybe you might think about the reason for the fact that the Palestinian Muslims have perpetrated this huge lie and why so many have swallowed the lie. It's such a complex question and so interesting. So who will go, who will go first? To the why. <clears throat> so... I think some of it, it comes from the name Palestine, which the, Brit uh, the Romans changed the name to Palestine, but there were no Palestinians. Yeah. Yeah. It was, came from the name Philistines, which the Philistine people are no longer in existence. And it was more to upset the Jewish people. And later on in life, um, the Arabs, they ad adopted the name Palestinians. It's not that the Palestinians were there and then they made a country. It was, that was a country. And then they had adopted the name much later. Yeah. Actually, when the United Nations decided to persuade the country, right, into two pieces, the little piece that was left, because the British mandate, the British gave already away 77% of the Palestinian mandate to Jordan, Syria, and Iraq. 77%, but a huge part, and that's Jordan, right? That became Transjordan, it's now Jordan. So there are so many Palestinians living in Jordan, you don't hear about them, right? And the division of the 23, what was left, which was very big desert, which Israel got to, of course, and made it more flourishing where possible, when the little rest of the Palestinian mandate was divided between Jews and Arabs, it was, that was announced like it will be a Jewish state and an Arab state in the Palestinian area. And there are certain Jews that live in Israel today who are born in that time and they have in their passports Palestinian. So that was equally also for the Christian that lived there, the Druze, everybody, right? And as you said just a few minutes ago, that Arafat has really given that a lot of identity. And then the identity politics came in, in this area very much, like as is from the river to the sea, is the whole idea of Hamas to take the whole area and Hezbollah. And, and it's like, to me, it is very clear that it's also, I have two solutions for the problem there. But one solution is if all the Jews would convert to Islam, the problem would be over. Right? It's one of the solutions that will never happen. So it is not so much only the land because the Palestinians or the Israeli Arab, not the Israeli Arabs, the Arabs in that area have gotten since 1947 so many chances to build their own state, 
but they don't know. They don't want that. They want the whole piece. They don't want peace with the whole piece. And what irritates me incredibly in so many talks and accusations, Israel possesses and occupies and uh, land occupies, then why did you start all the time a war? Because in 47, 48, 56, 67, 73, 80, 1980, in the 90s, we had also the Hezbollah problem. And in the early 2000s, the, the suicide attacks, why do you never then start a state, your own state? And I heard somebody say, yeah, the piece that they would get was not big enough. Don't start wars, because if you start a war, there is one big risk is that you lose. And that the other wins as a miracle, I would say, that little Israel against five neighboring Muslim countries, Arabic countries, they lost uh, they won as a miracle. And then they won land, which is a good tool in exchange for peace. That was the idealism of the Jewish state to do that. But no, that has never been accepted. And that is totally forgotten today for so many. It's like... I don't know where this will lead in the future because there's so much misinformation and you guys are not on TikTok, but I have watched there for a few hours and um, so much misinformation that is spread like wildfire and people have opinions all the time, right? Well, you know, there were a lot of Christian countries in the Middle East and the Muslims took those or the Arabs uh, took those countries over, all of them around um, Israel. And it seems to me that they just want as much as they, it's never going to be enough. They want more and more land, yeah. whether it's Jewish land or Christian land. They just want it all. That's why I came to the idea if everybody would convert to Islam, that's exactly what right. they mean. Only they don't want Jews or they don't want Jews, but they also don't want um, any Westerners, any Christians, any yeah. anything that not they do. They do. They want it all. I still haven't heard why it is that so many swallow the lie. Several reasons. That's Several. Maybe the reason number one is the people that like to believe this and are not are not Muslim and are not um, yeah are not Muslim is then they have some dormant anti-Semitic feelings and feel like oh this fits my uh, deep inherited often beliefs the Jews this the Jews that that's one thing and I also think that the young people today every person around their twenties. You know, they want to be having a goal. They want to have something to fight for, to have something like, yes, you know, it gives a good feeling. So that fits to young people. But, you know, if you don't open the history book, if you don't get informed well, I mean, honestly, if you want to know about Zionism, if you want to know about Israeli history and the history of the land or the Palestinian mandate, there is very objective information on Wikipedia. There are really great articles to be found. With, uh, and, and APEC publishes, and there a lot of things are published today. You can find it easily, but they don't go there. And the fact that they're not interested in educating truth. themselves, um, and, you know, because truth speaking. the information is really out there. And I'm not so sure that the that the um, that it's about dormant anti-Semitism. I think that it's way more yeah, no, that's a third group. Dormant. Yeah, no, that was a third group. There are definitely yeah, other yeah. groups. Yeah. yeah, I think that it's more, I think that it's way deeper than dormant anti Semitism. I think that they're looking for a reason um, to hate Jews because I think that it is much more deeply embedded and ingrained. Um, the anti-Semitism, I think it's very fashionable. It's in vogue to be anti-Semitic. Um, I think that first it started out as anti-Zionism, which was just a convenient excuse for anti-Semitism. And uh, also, as far as the young people are concerned, 
Uh, I think that, well, I grew up in Canada during the uh, Vietnam War, um, but at that time, uh, you know, people were, you know, university kids were protesting the Vietnam War. And uh, uh, so I think that university kids always want to protest something. So it's yeah. climate change, it's clean air, clean water, you know, those kinds of things. So I think that they want to be able to attach themselves to a cause, something that's important. And these kids really don't seem to know a heck of a lot about very much. And, um, and they don't really want to educate themselves. And it's very clear because when people go out to ask them which river, which sea, they really don't have a clue. They don't know anything. They don't even know the meaning of the word apartheid, you know, no. and it's a joke. The professors, a lot of professors are doing the same thing and they're not, they outgrew already that uh, elementary youthful um, idealism. So there is more up to it. And yeah, and in the meantime, there are quite some Palestinian uh, professors spread over the country that are not shying away with their opinions. And, you know, what I found very interesting is there is a YouTube series. I think his name is Gil Shaham or something, his last name, Gil Schuster. And he interviews Israelis and Palestinians. And the Palestinians I saw in a video they were all denying that there were Jews living in ever in the area because he says there's no antiquity. There are no, um, there is no proof of it. While the whole soil in Israel is loaded with what you can find. I mean, that's the same thing that Arafat said. No, that, that there is no temple there. We didn't build a mosque on the Jewish temple. There's no, that was not of that. Now, if you have been there the last few years, it's huge. It is an amazing big temple. It's so like, if you want, if you make people believe the lies is the truth and you do it so well and you play the victim guard, the card, the victim card. Well, there's also this political part of oppressors and victims, right? So if you're white, you're an oppressor, right? And if you don't, are not white, you're not an oppressor or you're a victim. That whole, in psychology, in therapy, you would appro approach the victim part. If you are being severely hurt and wounded and traumatized, right? You need to work through your victim feelings with that in order to, to get some healing, to change your way of looking at it. Otherwise, if you stay stuck in I'm a victim, you don't thrive and you don't heal and you block yourself. That's like very simple. Now, it is today really, I mean, pushed through people's larynx, the idea of if you're this, you can, you're from that country, you're that color, you're a victim. You're a victim. And the ones that don't have that are perpetrators or oppressors. Well, there are so many stories and so many different viewpoints around that. And I think every person could have elements of victimhood in them and oppressor mentality in them or thoughts because it is, we all mirror certain aspect of that in our personalities but the cultivation of victimhood if you belong to that group then you're a victim it is also maybe not easy to be very nice if you live in israel and if you have all those attacks and if family members of you yours are murdered in certain ways to be very nice to and very trusting every palestinian you meet that is hard yet israeli arabs there are like two million live usually pretty well together with the Israelis. And what I like today is seeing the videos, like the son of Hamas, who is not living there anyway, but he speaks out very openly, and several Israeli Arabs that speak out in favor of Israel. They say it's the only country we live in that we can do what we want. If you're gay, it's even easier. And whatever we want to do, we can do. And we don't have those rights in any other Muslim country. The, f the biggest joke for me was one of the very biggest joke, like in, I think it was in New York, they said uh, the queers for Palestine. It's like, that's not even ignorant. It's, you, you, I, you, I cannot even invent this. And they didn't do it once, it kept on going. And I was like, give them a one way ticket because a two way ticket is, uh, a tour ticket is a waste of money. They will never get out. It is so, um, it is not understanding who's your other partner and the victim loyalty to a victim is nice. And 
if you really want to establish a country, if you really want, I want a country for Palestinians, you build it. They had it. They had Gaza. They could have made Dubai from it. And they got so much help. They got from the Israelis in 2005 and they all left and they dragged down 17,000 Israelis that didn't want to leave Gaza. They had to leave there. They lived there their entire life. No, we gave it all to the Palestinians and they left their 80 greenhouses. You know what? When the Israelis left, they broke all the greenhouses. Why? They got water systems. They broke it. They took the pipes and used the pipes for digging tunnels. I mean, what is their victimhood here? What is the problem here? It means like you're blocking yourself from thriving. You block yourself from making a country for yourself and good place, a good living. And a lot of Palestinians, I believe, they have voted for Hamas, but not all of them could not vote because I heard they were also there. Hamas was controlling what they were doing. And they had horrific killings also between Al-Fatah and Hamas in Gaza. So I'm not saying, I do not see so many innocent Palestinians. That's also such a beautiful term because what innocent Palestinian has secretly said, the hostages are there or the hostages are there. Nobody did that in the opposite way. There were just the UNRWA people there and some teachers and some medical people had even hostages in their place and didn't say anything. So what's the innocence here? You go no, far. I, I heard... I heard hostages speak and they said the scariest day that they had was the day that they were let out because, and this were the young kids saying this, it was the scariest day because they're in the car and all these civilians are around them and throwing rocks at the car and they were afraid they're going to be lynched and they couldn't wait until they got out because innocent yeah, Gazans that yeah. are just surrounding them and putting fear in them. Yeah, there were a lot. There were a lot of people like that. Yeah, I think so too. For me, it's really an unwillingness, an unwillingness, on, on the Palestinian side to build a state, because I followed it in all in the years, and I dig myself into the information around it, the land in exchange for peace it has never been really accepted. Yeah. And, but and they don't want they, you know, they don't want to have that type of a peace. And when I say they, I'm not necessarily talking about the Palestinians, because I'm sure there were some Palestinians in the beginning who would have, except that if you didn't go along with Hamas, you would lose a family member, or you would lose something else. And yeah, so it's, it's it was easier to go yeah. along than than not go along. And it wasn't easy. Look at they can't like go to to Egypt, you've seen the gate, the the wall between Egypt and Gaza. And, and Gaza. You know, it's like hello. Of course, they, they welcomed into Israel, and and who did they hurt most or first? Were all the people who lived on the borders who would help them, who would drive them to doctors' appointments, who would go into Gaza and teach the them, like, not teach, but, yeah. yeah, the Israelis. In the and, and, and they, they didn't. I don't think they weren't allowed to be full citizens in any other Arab country. And I think that there was, that's part of the plan is to keep them right there. Because if they're not right there, Israel might get that spot. Yeah. And I think it's just, let's, let's keep our spot here so we can get Israel gone. And I, I think that it's like we have a foot in the ground and we're not giving it up. We're not making a country. We're not we're going to make peace terms with Israel. We're not going to do any of that stuff. Because if we have a Dubai right next to Israel, people might want to come from Israel to Dubai, you know, to that place and back and forth. And it might, it might water down some of the. Yeah, exactly. And it was first, Gaza was first in Egyptian hands. And Gaza happily gave it in order for the peace uh, treatment, peace contract to Israel. Yeah. I join so many people that have, that know more about it than I do, but that I learned from and have learned from that they say there is no stolen land by the Jews. It's only bought and gained, yes, by being attacked in a war. Now, again, don't start a war if you don't want to lose, because starting a, lower, a war can include that you lose. And there are many countries that take, a, they go to war, they take over the land, and then they keep it afterwards. Yeah, that's but how you, like you said, it's part, 
And other countries don't get, nobody says anything. Right. No, no. It's, I, it's the country yeah. that gets black when, when that happens is Israel. Yeah. It doesn't have anywhere else. It's beyond. Israel's head to a, held to a different standard. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, that's such a great standard sentence. <laughs> We are held to or hold or held to a different standard, unfortunately. Yeah. And we, the last word is not said about this, but I would like to shift now to our next topic. And that is, we all have chosen anti summit of the week. And I would like to ask Rachelle, what is your choice and explain why? Oh my God, there are so many. <laughs> yeah, choose one. <laughs> I choose just one. Okay, well, I pick AOC, um, who's part of the squad, um, and uh, she's incredibly obnoxious, and um, she's uh, not very bright, and uh, it's pretty obvious when you watch her and listen to her talk. Cindy, yours. You're well, into I had, I had another squad member because I was doing Rashid Talib, who actually got censored this week for her uh, comments about, um, oh, from the river to the sea. But she was saying, oh, that's not, doesn't mean anything. It's just, you know, it's just a rallying cry. No, it's and a it's like, statement. It comes from their hands fast. Well, you know, not according to her. Um, and so she was, she was my one, although I don't think that, you know, um, that that was enough, you know, cause it really doesn't do anything. It doesn't mean that she had any rights taken away. It doesn't mean that she had to be quiet. I mean, you get censored. Okay. So you were censored. It's, it's, it's a slap on the hand. It's like, yeah, don't do that again. It's not nice. You know, it's, it, it, it was nothing, but yeah, no, she, she wanted this week for me. Um, although there's, there's so many to choose from. But I just showed that one yeah. today. Marcy. All right. So, yes, there are a lot of people to choose from. But I didn't go political. I went into entertainment. And I'm going with Rosie O'Donnell because I just read this yesterday. And I'm saying she is because she's spreading lies. And she is saying that the Israelis are terrible because we are targeting babies. She is very misinformed. We go out of the way. How many people would drop leaflets, armies would drop leaflets to say and call, make uh, t send texts to say move because this is where we're targeting. And for her to say that we target babies, I, she's, she's confused. She's missing something. We don't stand behind our children like Hamas does, and they use Hamas. They use their children as um, shields. We value our. We value life. So, you know, shame on you, Rosie O'Donnell, for spreading lies. Yeah, and so many people don't even believe that. That's like, how do you target babies? Yeah, like you go in their homes and you look for their cribs. What does the IDF doing? Of course not. I mean, it's just too crazy. Now, mine, I'm going to read it because I want to really be very clear about what she posted. There is an, a website on Instagram, and that is called Physicians Against Anti-Semitism. And they post a lot of people that do things in the medical world, like, you know, do know, know your nurse, know your doctor. So this one is Poliana Suarez um, Idaraga. And her accounts are down everywhere because people, you know, if you expose them, then, of course, they get the bash lag. So they go to take off all their accounts. Even on LinkedIn, I cannot find her. But I want to read what she posts. Zionists are white oppressors and they are use Judaism as a shield. Did you know that, guys? How dare you? She knows about Judaism, right? Shame on you, even. DEI encompasses Jewish people, not just Ashkenazi, but Mizrahi and Sephardic Jews. Do no harm, capitalized. How about we also start by defining the word Semite? 
how many white physicians in comparison to BIPOC? And that's a, such a stupid question. How many white physicians in comparison to BIPOC? Huh? You know BIPOC? What? What's BIPOC? BIPOC is people with people of color. How, how do you bring that up there? So the nepotism. Look at the state. Look at the stats. And in Black History Month. But of course, you're a fascist. I mean, what a stupid text that is. And it is a nurse and travel nurse for a huge organization. And um, that's, uh, that's, to me, terrible. She also warns for um, don't go with the, be careful, see what happens in the medical world, because there are so many Zionist, uh, um, and how do you say that, uncover, how do you say that, Zionist undercover in the medical world. Zionist undercover in the medical world. How can you even invent it? Right? So that's mine. What are, Many more. what are the Zionists going to do? What are these Zionists going to do except that they're going to cure Muslim terrorists like the one that has Sinbar. a brain tumor that Sinbar. Sinbar. Yeah. What a mistake. So what are they going to do? <laughs> You know. war that the Israeli in, when he was in prison, he had a brain tumor and he got the surgery and he's now He's now the organizer of October 7th. Thank right. You. Thank you. Yeah. And then the Zionist here and the But this kind of people, they are so under the ground, underground uh, workers with spreading of lies and disgusting. This is typically a blood libel. This is typically the level right. of, of the Middle uh, Ages, the blood libels. It's terrible. But you know what? Mm -hmm. It is that we have two responses, right? We all have that, like it's terrible and it is so shocking that people think like that. And that is ter totally for me too. But now we know and we need to be standing up and standing out. That's very important. We do that with this. So I would like to hear now the positive note. Who is your hero for today, Rachel? My hero is Brigitte Gabrielle. Uh, she's a Lebanese-American conservative author, lecturer, uh, activist. Um, she's a fascinating woman, brilliant. Awesome. Thank you. Sandy, your time. <laughs> hey, mine is uh, Oren Kahanovec, I think is how you pronounce his last name. He is a tour guide who does YouTube videos and uh, guys. you know he has I, I prefer his undying loyalty to his adoptive country of Israel and his wonderful way of expressing facts. Prove him wrong. He uh, he yeah. just he just inspires me all the time. He's just uh, he gives out facts. He, he he explains things in a very clear, basic, understandable way. And, you know, if you want to argue with him, he's, he's there to, to, to hear what you have to say. I'm assuming if you have a real argument, um, not just BS. Yeah. Thank but anyways, you. he's my hero. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> and Marcy. I'm going to say Mia Shem because she has gone through hell and she came out and she's given many um, interviews. And she's positive, and she, I think she's the one who coined the slogan, We Will Dance Again. She um, tattooed it on her arm, and she's just an incredibly strong woman. And, um, and she's only 19 or 20, huh? She's very young. Yeah. Wow, that's so powerful. Yeah. That's so powerful. There's a beautiful video that her mother got filmed and she heard that she was going to be liberated. If you see somebody happy, then you want to see that video. Well, wonderful. Yeah. I've seen her in a few interviews and you can see how she's, her face looks different. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. She oh. just looks better. She's healing and she's given strength to so many people and, other hostages and um, yeah. just encouraging people and trying to get the rest of the hostages released. Yeah. 
Well, that's another team theme, but thank you for that. Okay, my hero is Douglas Murray. Oh. I am so impressed of a man that is so well educated. And then you could say, okay, because it fits your narrative, right? But I don't think I go so much with the narrative. I think, and certainly he is not going with narratives. I think he really knows his stuff and is so well spoken and is like a joy to listen to. And he is, I'm very, really, very thankful that he stands up for us in the way he does. And um, yeah, I am fine. He's my superhero, <laughs> really. Well, thank you so very much. And I see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.